Welcome to Wednesday, I'm Ashley Jenkins and new rumors have begun circulating that Nintendo is working on its next generation of hardware and is developing its handheld and living room consoles jointly. According to the rumor, and go ahead and put a bunch of flashing lights and exclamation points around that because there's nothing yet to substantiate it, the next generation is being called Fusion, with the handheld being Fusion DS and the living room console being Fusion Terminal. A list of specs has been provided and makes both look significantly more powerful than their current counterparts. The Fusion DS is listed as having an ARM-based processor and Adreno 420-based graphics processor from AMD and 3GB of memory, two of which is reserved for games while one powers the operating system. Some of the notable departures from current 3DS specs include motorized circle pads, a thumbprint scanner, Bluetooth support, a slide-out design with a swivel hinge, 16GB of internal flash storage, and a 3G chip with GPS, presumably emulating Amazon Kindle's on-the-go purchasing functionality. The Fusion Terminal is listed as sporting a customized Radeon HD RX 200 GPU, 4GB of unified DDR4SD RAM, and a Power 8-based 8-core 64-bit IBM processor. Whew. Notably, it's also listed as supporting up to 4 Wii U gamepads and having Bluetooth support, an inductive charging service for Fusion DS, and, this is particularly interesting, either a disk-based version or a diskless version. As cool as all that sounds, there are reasons to be skeptical. The Adreno processor that's tipped to be in the Fusion DS is part of Qualcomm's Snapdragon hardware and hasn't previously been licensed to AMD. And the ARM architecture in its current form couldn't run the code in existing Nintendo products, which would mean a complete lack of backwards compatibility. Not that that's unheard of, Nintendo's proprietary media has forced them to cut generational ties before. Whether the specs and in-tandem hardware development are accurate, it isn't a stretch to believe that Nintendo is working on their next generation. The Wii U hasn't taken off, forcing the company to slash their sales expectations down to $2.8 million for the year, and the company is considering a restructure, which would make a lot of sense if they're looking at bringing their two hardware platforms closer together. For now, Nintendo is keeping quiet, saying they don't comment on rumors or speculation. In more concrete news, Hearthstone has entered an open beta phase in North America, and Blizzard plans to roll it out to all regions over the next few days, making the game available to play to everyone who wants to give it a try. However, Blizzard warns that an open beta doesn't mean the game is done. The company says open beta is still not a final release, and we will be closely monitoring many aspects of the game to ensure a positive play experience for everyone. Hearthstone is a free-to-play digital collectible card game in which players build decks via earned or purchased booster packs and features four different modes that vary in requirements to play. It's currently available on PC and Mac, and Blizzard plans to release it on iOS and Android devices later this year. Putting a dent in the festivities is the news that Blizzard has filed suit against Chinese developer Unico over their Hearthstone clone mobile game Legend of Crouching Dragon, which launched in October, and Blizzard is seeking $1.6 million in damages. Also running into legal trouble is the Banner Saga. Candy Crush Saga developer King has filed a notice of opposition with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office that claims the use of Saga in the game's name is likely to cause confusion in consumers who believe it to be related to King's line of puzzle games. Unlikely to cause confusion is that, unlike Candy Crush Saga's Match 3 puzzle game, the Banner Saga is a Viking-themed, turn-based, tactical RPG. The first of three planned chapters in a single-player campaign released January 14th from indie studio Stoic, which is comprised of former Bioware developers. The game was an early Kickstarter success, closing with $723,000 in funding in 2012, more than seven times their initial funding goal. The Candy Crush Saga developer filed the trademark application for the word Saga in November 2011, and the current status as of December 4th states that an office action suspending further action on the application has been sent to the applicant. King has come under further scrutiny after filing a trademark application for the word Candy last February, which has been approved for publication as of January 15th, leaving other companies 30 days to file opposition. Unlike the Saga trademark, which only seeks to control video games, the Candy trademark claims control over everything from games to baby monitors to clothing to be enforced as the company sees fit. Scary. And that is the news for today. What direction do you think Nintendo should take with their next generation of hardware? Would tying their handheld and living room consoles more closely be a success? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Then check out RoosterTeeth.com for a new episode of The Patch tomorrow if you missed our live stream today.